Fellas, did you know that Bungie is releasing an update that will finally allow us to change our Guardian's appearance? Yeah. 10 years this is taken, but it's finally happening. However, thanks to our partner, Geology, you can start to improve your IRL avatars today. No patch required. That's because Geology is the number one skin and hair care brand. And unlike other brands, Geology makes skincare easy with full transparency on ingredients and directions on usage that are super easy to follow right on their website. Guys, there's a reason that they have 30 awards and over 7,000 five-star customer reviews. I still fondly remember my first time visiting their website, taking that 30-second quiz, and then being presented with literally the best skincare routine I have ever had. And believe me, guys, I have tried so many different skincare products and hair care products over the years, and something that's terrible about other products is that they strip your natural oils. Hence why, if you've noticed that you'll get breakouts after using a certain skin product over time, there's a reason for that. It's because it's literally making the health of your skin worse. Geology cultivates your skincare naturally, and that's what makes all the difference here. Guys, if you're interested in Geology today, they are offering 70% off your first personalized skincare trial set with an additional 50% off on all add-ons. By simply using code ASKRAW70 at checkout, you can net yourself a hell of a deal. We've been partnering with Geology for over a year now, and their products truly have been a blessing for us. Guys, for the past few weeks, I have been using this build nonstop. Now, it's not like this build wasn't good before. It's just gotten better. And this is our Pyro Gill Gauntlet build. Now, I'm sure most of my Titans have utilized this exotic at some point. It takes advantage of the exotic perk percussive flames, which modifies your burning maw into a single high damage slam for your hammer. It also creates several cyclones of flame. Now, obviously the super damage is potent, but my favorite thing here is what it does to Consecration. Consecration's second slam creates a cyclone of flame. And the reason why I like this second benefit is because it goes hand in hand with our changes to Consecration. First up, Revitalizing Blast, which is a debuff that we can apply to enemies inside of PVE, was previously not working with Consecration. Now it is. As pre Previously noted in update 7.3.5's patch notes. The second thing is Bungie just increased the all-around ease of use of this aspect. They increased the primary scorched ground follow projectile distance from 18 to 20 meters. They also increased the height of the slam by about one meter. They increased the travel distance of the slam ground follow projectile from 16 to 20 meters, which is a big deal by the way. That matches that primary scorch. And they increase the travel speed of the slam ground follow projectile, which by the way includes Pyrogale's enhanced version from 16 to 24 meters. Now what this really means is, is that inside of PVE, you have more ease of use with this aspect. And the thing about Consecration is that when you activate that charge melee, you send out that initial wave of solar energy. And the follow-up wave, which is the heavy damage dealer, is the one that's going to reward you with an ignition. See, the first wave scorches, the second wave ignites. And you don't even need Ember of Ashes to pull this off. I love rocking this though with Soul Invictus. I know most people really like like Roaring Flames for that stacking and damage, but Soul Invictus is so good for survivability. As Solar Ability Final Blows, Hammer Soul Impacts, and defeating just Scorched Targets creates Sunspots, which is so easy to do here with this build. But now I want to take you through my Fragments before we get into weapons. The Fragments that I'm taking advantage of are Ember of Mercy, Ember of Benevolence, Ember of Searing, and Ember of Empyrean. Now some of these I know are probably making you question a few things. Like, why don't we just complete the commit here to Ignitions? And don't get me wrong, I do like that. But the main thing is that I'm trying to find ways to stay alive, especially in GM content. Ember of Mercy not only gives us benefits, when reviving allies, but most notably picking up a fire sprite grants restoration. Ember of Benevolence says that applying restoration cure radiant to allies grant increased grenade melee and class ability regeneration. This ties directly into our weapon, which is heliocentric, which has heal clip. Heal clip, by the way, is tremendously better in this sandbox as it grants yourself cure times two and your allies cure times one. And every time you proc it, you're procking Ember of Benevolence, giving you that 400% increase in regeneration. Then we have Ember of Searing. Where defeating Scorched targets grants melee energy and creates a fire sprite. Again, feeding back into Ember of Mercy and into our melee. And then finally, Ember of Aperion, where Solar Weapon or Ability Final Blows extends the duration of restoration and radiant effects applied to you. Now, you don't have to do that one, but I am rocking two Solar Weapons. So this is really easy for me to dip into. Now, the reason why I bring up Ember of Aperion as well as Ember of Mercy is because, guys, in Update 7.3.5 and in this current sandbox, they're better. 
Empyrean, for example, has increased maximum extension duration from 12 to 15 seconds. Now, they reduced the timer extension granted per solar kill to compensate for that drastically improved consistency, but previously this granted a flat timer extension, regardless of the type of target defeated. Now, though, this time varies based off the target's tier, with lower time extension returns than previously for minor combatants, but higher returns for champion plus tier combatants. Now, Ember of Mercy now grants a flat two additional seconds to players' active restoration or radiant timer, rather than refreshing its duration. This value is increased to three seconds when Ember of Solace is equipped. The main thing is, guys, is that it doesn't reset. You see, previously, when picking up a Fire Sprite while rocking Ember of Mercy, instead of it extending the duration, it would just reset your restoration down to three, which is why a lot of times Ember of Mercy would get you killed. So you see where I'm going with this, guys, is that everything here is contributing to us performing much better with this build in the sandbox. But now this takes us to our artifact mods, and finally, our exotic weapon of choice. Obviously, we're rocking things like Revitalizing Blast, Heart of the Flame, we're casting your Solar Super, grants nearby allies Radiant, and increases the damage of your Super. We've got Flint Striker, where Rapid Solar Weapon Precision hits, and Rapid Solar Weapon Final Blows grants yourself Radiant, and this is pretty much free Radiant at all times. I'm also taking advantage of Overload Rockets, because I'm rocking a Rocket Launcher, Rays of Precision, where while Radiant Solar Precision Final Blows cause combatants to ignite, and Arginor now, the exotic weapon we're rocking here is Dragon's Breath. And the reason why we're rocking this is because Dragon's Breath got a buff in Update 7.3.5. You see, Bungie disclosed that they're going to be buffing the ammo reserves for rocket launchers like Truth, Deathbringer, Galahorn, but they completely left off Dragon's Breath. Dragon's Breath got that buff. Fellas, this is such a good buff. I can't express how much deadlier Dragon's Breath is now, having more shots. If you have two reserve mods on, which is what I'm rocking, I'm literally rocking two harmonic reserves. Reserves. This is netting me 11 rockets for my Dragon's Breath. And for something like the Battleground Nightfall, where you could top off your heavy, this pretty much means you can throw down heavy whenever and however you like. But you're essentially just lighting the entire battlefield on fire. And you could swap out one of the fragments for Ember of Ashes, by the way, which of course does pair well with the Scorch that Power Go does and synergizes beautifully here. The main takeaway is that solar weapons in this build are phenomenal. If you got a weapon that also has Hill Clip, this dips in to our fragments even more, keeping yourself alive and your teammates alive and consecration even though that buff on paper looked like mainly a buff for pvp guys i've actually been appreciating this buff more for pve i didn't even realize that i needed this ease of use buff but it has been noticeable in this sandbox and if you like rock and pirate gale it'll be noticeable for you too fellas dim links are down below if you want to check this out i'm gonna let this gameplay play out again for my weapons i was rocking a part in our dust with blinding grenades a heliocentric with hill clip and incandescent and of course dragon's breath with the exotic catalyst with two ammo reserve mods we'll also be live tomorrow doing runs with people so feel free to come by our twitch i'm at 14 40. yes yeah, definitely at 14 40. But we, we recently just made the change. Dragon's Breath. Getting my health back from this. No reason to conserve any heavy ammo either. 
Oh, that's sexy, guys. That's sexy. Keep it up. Keep it up. Make sure we kill that barrier in there. All right, what's up? Pop off everything. That was a much, much better run right there. So there's insane. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things you can utilize in this this 9-5. I mean, I've used to use the Strand build. That's still good. Even with the one-two punch nerf, it's still good. But this is a build I'm going to utilize probably in Into the Light. Just because of the high up time for our melee. And with the ability to apply the debuff as well, revitalizing blast is fantastic. It's great for not only ad clear, but also taking down big health targets too. Woo! And do I do shit like that? Nice melee, thank you. Dude, that's that kind of shit I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing that can end a day one rate. Alright, come over here. I'm gonna sit in thy fire. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. Barrier here, blinding everybody. Love it. Because we have so much special ammo, I'm literally just going to use Dragon's Breath to clear that out without having to push up. Occasionally, we'll have to push up, but the most part, it should cover everything we need. Deal with this yellow bar. Oh, not mess with any of these snipers. That's not good. Again, it's that first hit of Consecration. I mean, that Consecration that hits the Scorch and then the follow-up for the Ignition. You want to hit with both of those blasts. Uh, 
surprised we're not getting another stun right there. Perfect. Good stuff, guys. We didn't even use our super once there. Probably could have. Lighting is so nasty. So damage is minimal. I suspect the witness is treating this scorn as a living archive, copying important information to its mind for safekeeping. Guy will shred you so fast. Get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. You don't have to go to the other side, brother. We just need two. We just need two, man. Drop that well. Other kills out. Perfect, perfect. What I love about Dragon's Breath here is you've got the assets around the boss and stuff, and it just takes them all out too. With all the splash damage and stuff. Around it right here. I'm not the dead guy, yeah, I am. Thank God for that heal. Just rest. All right, we're four out of five on this. Right in the well, dude. That scorn crossbow does so much damage.
But the dragon threat stays on him as it carries over. Good run, guys. One of our best runs today. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.